Good afternoon, everyone. This will be my video lecture in Chameleon Values and Worms. No? Today is October 5, 2022, Wednesday afternoon. And uh, of course, uh, I'd like to greet each and everyone, of all the teachers out there in the universe, a happy World Teachers Day, which we celebrate today. No? <coughs> to give importance also to the role of teachers in molding the personalities of our students and pupils. Okay, so once again, happy World Teachers Day. So our lecture for today has something to do with institutionalism, no? institutionalization rather, of values and norms. No? <clears throat> and institutionalization is the last part of chapter two of your module or or or, or of your book no so uh, because it will be finished today our discussion will center on institutionalization which is the last portion of unit two or uh, chapter two <laughs> now your assignment will be to do activity sheet number two no? So this will be your assignment. You have to accomplish or do activity sheet number two. And later on, after my lecture, I will be giving you the five words which you have to spell correctly and give their respective meanings. No? In the activity sheet, of course, in Roman numeral number two, I have to repeat the instruction that when you give your answer, it has to be in your own words, in your own language, okay? So, do I make myself clear? So, <clears throat> after uh, you finish doing the activity sheet number two, you proceed reading chapter three, no? which is Vivian's Social Control and Sanctions. No? So, your assignment is not only to do activity sheet number two, but also to read unit three or chapter three of your book. Okay, clear so far? You'll be able to finish your module until the end of the semester. I promise and I guarantee you that. Okay, so we move on now to the last portion of your book, which has something to do with institutionalization no? <clears throat> of course the word that comes to your mind is of course the word institution no? institution now the process no? the process by which norms Remember, institutionalization is a process. No, it's a process. No? The process by which norms, uh, values, beliefs, social roles, as well as certain patterns of behavior, certain patterns of behavior, this ones, no? This ones. They all these components, no? I repeat. Institutionalization is a process, no? It's a process by which norms, values, beliefs, social roles, and certain patterns of behavior are what? No? Are embedded. What do you understand by embedded? No? It forms part of the system. Already embedded from the word embed. You have to embed a certain norm, a certain value or belief. No? So I repeat, when we talk of institutionalization of values and norms, we are talking about a process. No? It's the process by which these components, these elements, norms, values, beliefs, social roles, certain patterns of behavior are embedded. Embedded where? <coughs> where is it embedded? Embedded where? In society in an organization or in a group, no? So, process wherein values, norms, beliefs are embedded, are embedded 
no? Where do you embed? No? Embedded where? In a group? In a in an institution or organization? Or in society? No? So, in short, if the norms or values or beliefs had already been embraced no, or followed by a group, by institution, or by society collectively, meaning as a group, or collectively, no, as a society or institution, then there is already what we call institutionalization. No? <clears throat> it becomes a part of the way of life, it becomes an already an institution in that particular group, institution or society or organization rather not so you understand what we mean by institutionalization institutionalization again is a process by which norms values beliefs social rules and a certain patterns of behavior are embedded embedded collectively within a group within an organization or within a society now the question here is uh, when do we say no when when do we say when is there institutionalization when do we say that there is already institutionalization of values and norms no? when is there institutionalization of values and norms well these are the indicators now I will tell you if the norms or values are already present or have been institutionalized or established, no? The first is a great number of people in that organization or society have come to accept, not accepted. If the people there or the members of an organization have come to accept, no? those values and norms, then that is already an indication that there, that there is institutionalization. What else, aside from being accepted? Now the second is, of course, those values and norms have been internalized by the people or by the members of that organization. So we can also say that there was institutionalization. Right? I'm making it very simple for you to easily understand. And then the third indicator would be there is of course a system of system of <coughs> sanctions or penalties no if there are already sanctions for violation or not following the values and norms then most likely it has been institutionalized and of course the values and norms have been standardized what do you mean by standardized well it has come to consistency and uniformity okay it has been developed in such a manner that there is already consistency and uniformity of values and norms all this if you could see all this being present in the organization or society then it's not most likely but it's about 99.9 percent .9 that those values and norms had already been institutionalized so these are the indicators now when do we say that there is institutionalization of values and norms again when those values and norms have already been accepted by a great number of people in or members in an organization or society when those values and norms have been internalized by the same set of people and then there is a system of sanctions or penalties and those values and norms have been developed in such a way that they have been standardized or when we say standardized there is already uniformity and consistency okay clear now there's another question no why why naman after the when so we take the why why is there a need to institutionalize no so i like to change this question why after the when we have the why why is there a need no anything not to institute why is there a need to institutionalize so this is our next question no why is 
there a need to institutionalize? What do you think? Are the reason why, or reasons, or uh, reason or reasons why there is a need to institutionalize these values and norms? Well, of course, there is. Uh, these are the reasons. No, the reasons why we have to do institu institutionalization. First, the first reason would be there is a need to institutionalize these values and norms in order that the same will be embraced embraced or followed in a consistent way no? consistency because after all we are we are after consistency and uniformity no so this is one of the reasons no uh, there is a need to institutionalize these values and norms because we want to see that these values and norms have been embraced or are embraced and followed in a consistent way by the members of that society or organization. Okay? Remember that consistent way. The second is, of course, <coughs> uh, we are after institutionalization of values and norms so that they become or the values and norms become a part of the way of life. What is the way of life again that we call? They form part of the culture of that particular organization or society. No? So aside from uh, taking into consideration the fact that these values and norms have been uh, or are being followed or embraced in a consistent way, they should also form part of the culture of the members there are thereof or of that society no? it becomes a way of life the third reason of course is um, the reason why there is a need to institutionalize is of course to establish a strong commitment no? just like any organization what we want is a strong commitment from the members no? it's not only a matter of what Comply, but there should be a strong commitment to follow and embrace the values and norms in that organization or in that society. No? So we are after not only being part of our culture, but there should be a strong commitment also on the part of the members of the organization or society. Okay, what's the fourth reason? What do you think? Why? Why is there a need to institutionalize? Well, of course, the fourth is we create what? Because there is a strong commitment, there is one heart, <coughs> one spirit. No? This is a, an indication that the members are united. No? Or that the organization is cohesive, correct? So when you say cohesion or being cohesive, then there is one heart, one spirit, no? And that is also one of the reasons why we have to institutionalize values and norms. And of course, the last reason, why is there a need to institutionalize these values and norms is of course, in order for the people to be able to be able to retain to be able to retain these values and norms over a long period of time <coughs> long period of time no in short the last reason is that in order for the members of the organization or the people of society to be able to retain these values and norms over a long or longer period of time what is the reason why there is a need for them to retain for a longer, longer period of time? Well, for stability, no? I mentioned also unity and, of course, cohesion. No? Clear so far? So, for stability, unity, cohesion, and, of course, solidarity. Solidarity. So, there is the... These are the reasons why uh, the people or members of an organization should hold on to the values and norms over a long period of time 
for purposes of solidarity, stability, unity, and cohesion. Okay? <clears throat> now, you may ask, finally, what is, or what, what makes norms, because we are norm, we are after norms, no? Values, we took that up in chapter 1. We are here for norms in chapter 2, no? So, what are the importance of norms? <clears throat> Remember that uh, norms, what is the objective of norms? Of course, to regulate human behavior, right? Regulate human behavior, no? Meaning, only those that are acceptable and desirable, acceptable and desirable should be exhibited by members or by the people thereof, no? So, if norms are intended to regulate human behavior, in turn, or as a consequence, as a whole, we are after social order, no? We do not want chaos, we do not want madness, we do not want uh, disunity, etc. So that is the objective, social order. Now, I repeat, let us take one by one, why are norms important in our society? Okay? What do you think? Give us one reason why norms Why norms are important in an organization or in society. No? One of the reasons is, of course, I told you already provide, norms would provide social order, no? social meaning society. No? There is order in our society. There are norms. No? <coughs> Second, Reason is to establish, I already mentioned this, to establish acceptable or what we call desirable behavior, behaviors, no? <clears throat> only those that can be, uh, can be seen as being what, within the bounds of normalcy or within the bounds of sanity no, should be acceptable or desirable behaviors in society. The third reason is of course uh, because we are after regulating the behavior in order to exercise self-control. Exercise self-control. You could just imagine if there are no rules or if there are no uh, norms to be followed, of course everything will be in chaos, everything will be in disarray. No? We do not want that to happen. So we have to institutionalize norms in order to exercise self-control and ultimately what? <laughs> ultimately develop a good personality. No? Personality of people. No? Pleasant and good personality. Okay, so those are the reasons. There is one more. To regulate our actions and behavior. The fourth is to regulate. I mentioned this already. To regulate our actions and <coughs> behavior. Regulate our actions or behavior. In short, if norms are intended to regulate our actions, the effect would be there will be social order order in society and then the last one the last reason why norms are important is it gives cohesion to our society gives give cohesion cohesion meaning unity or uh, something like it's compact, no? give cohesion to society, no? united, no? or there is solidarity. Okay, so those are the reasons why it is important to have norms in our society or in our organization. Okay, so 
Your assignment will be to do activity sheet number two. And here, Roman numeral number one states that the instructor will mention at least five words, no? Which you ought to spell correctly and give their respective meanings, okay? So, do you have your pen with you to jot down the five words that I will be mentioning? Okay, the first word would be, okay, are you ready? Benevolent. No? Number one is benevolent. Okay. Number two, replicate. Number two, replicate. Number three, deviates. Number three, deviates. Number four, pristine. Number four, pristine. And number five, elucidate. Number five, elucidate. Okay? So I hope that you are able to get all the five words that I mentioned. Uh, spell them correctly and give their respective meanings. No? So starting uh, Friday or next week, wherein we will still again meet in CBN uh, by the grace of God you start reading chapter 3 thereof, no? Okay, that is all for today. Good afternoon, everyone.